Um, I'll show you this continuum that I call um, uh, eyes, ears, the skin, and expert. And sometimes when you're inviting a coach into your classroom, you're inviting the coach in because of their expertise. Um, I know that I've got this literacy coach who's got an extensive background in training in, uh, in helping kids uh, handle a science textbook. And so I'd like that teacher to come into my science classroom, observe my work with kids, and give me recommendations as to how I can make the text more student friendly. Uh, what things can I do pre-reading to assist my students in going into this activity? Um, I want a teacher with in-depth math background to come in and observe my science class and give me some recommendations for how to teach the math concepts that students need in order to tackle my science uh, uh, content. Um, in that case, I'm looking for that person who's coming in to bring their expertise into my classroom and use that expertise. On the other end of the continuum, you want somebody to come into your classroom because they have eyes, ears, and skin. That's all you need the coach to have. Because you want them to come into your classroom and see and hear and feel and collect data for you. Okay? Now, let's go back to yesterday. We raised the issue, how do, you, how do you get trust? I don't hear you. How do you get trust? Yeah, everybody. How do you get trust? Say what you're going to do and then do it. So when I'm in a pre-conference, one of the things I need to uncover in the pre-conference is what role does the person want me to play when I come into their classroom? Do they want me to come in and be eyes, ears, and skin? Do they want me to come in as an expert? Or did the teacher and I go to the same training and we both have about the same amount of expertise? So in other words, we're more than eyes, ears, and skin, but I'm really no more of an expert at this than you are. We're going to be here in the middle. I use my pre-conference to help me figure out where we would be on this continuum. Example, I'm coaching in a high school and the French teacher asked me to come and observe her French three class. We have a little pre-conference where she shares with me that one rule in her French 3 class is there's no English allowed to be spoken. I share with her, I may have one slight problem observing this as her coach. <laughs> she tells me that what she wants to know is how engaged are her students and what does she do to encourage engagement. So we come up with a plan that I will record with a different symbol when students raise their hands and get called upon. I will record with another symbol when a student gets called upon even though they didn't have a hand raised. And I will have yet a third symbol for students who yell out answers when they haven't been called upon. I sit in her French class and I've got her seating chart and I'm recording everything that's happening. And at the end of the class, we sit down in a post-conference, and I turn and I show her my collected results. And she looks at me and she goes, do you know what this tells me? And I said, no, I don't. And she said, I have a very shy young girl seated here around three very aggressive males. And whenever my eye attention is pulled to that part of the classroom, those males are grabbing my attention, and I'm totally missing that young girl. I need to change her seat. Thank you so much. And I said, you're welcome. <laughs> I had no idea what I had done other than thrown some symbols down on the page. In other words, I was eyes, ears, and skin, and she used her expertise to figure out what the data I collected had meant. Several months later, I'm in an elementary school, and a first grade teacher uh, teaching a science class tells me she'd like to know about student participation. And I said to her, oh, I've done that before. Let me show you these symbols I've used for another teacher. She said, oh, that would be great. Would you come and do that in my class? I said, I'd love to. I go in, I start observing. About 15 minutes into the lesson, it dawns on me, you know, this would be a much better lesson if she taught it inductively instead of deductively. What just happened? 
I just, yeah, you, some of you are saying he, I was evaluating her. You're correct. What happened is I switched from eyes, ears, and skin collecting data about student participation. I switched to an expert on how to teach a science class to uh, a, a first grade classroom. Now, not only did I switch, but guess what? I just missed the last three kids who <laughs> responded because I wasn't paying attention to the task that she had given me to do. I had switched over to expertise. The way that I build trust is I identify in the pre-conference the role the teacher wants me to play, and then I play that role. I will lose my trust if you invite me in to be eyes, ears, and skin, and I go expert. I'll also lose my trust if you invited me in because of my expertise, and then I play eyes, ears, and skin instead of using the expertise that I have that you invited me to share. The key part is that the pre-conference builds the agreement with the teacher as to the role the teacher would like you to play. 